We have shots fired at the engine. We are pinned down. Protecting the residents of the United States is an enormous challenge. Our nation's law enforcement, fire, and EMS personnel depend on, and they deserve, effective radio communication systems to face this challenge. When seconds count, delays in the vital communications between agencies and across jurisdictions endangers lives and property. This issue is too important for any of us to ignore and too big for any of us to solve on our own. I hope that all of us at federal, state, and local levels will work together to make sure our public safety officers are equipped to do their job. If we do, all Americans will reap the benefits. Spectrum is essentially the electromagnetic real estate in the sky. It is the medium over which radio communications are carried. Uh, spectrum is divided into frequencies, and uh, frequencies are carried in a particular channel. Public safety entities started out in the low-band VHF. Uh, as those bands became more and more congested, and as technology developed to allow operations in higher bands, public safety entities were granted spectrum bands in ever higher ranges. Public safety frequencies are virtually all over the spectrum. And the problem is it's not dedicated to public safety. There's a lot of competition. There's cell phones. There's television. Uh, there's all kinds of uses uh, that prohibit public safety from having an exclusive use. The FCC has had a mission to provide public safety the spectrum that it needs. And it has done that over the years. But it's done it in a piecemeal fashion as the needs of uh, public safety arose, more spectrum was allocated. Until today, we have public safety operations at the federal and state level uh, in 10 bands. The problem with interoperability over all those bands is that no commercial grade radio can span all those bands and you don't have the ability to have one radio operate with all of the uh, users from, from the public safety community. When we deal with the issue of interoperability, uh, it is very difficult for any community to have a police department on one frequency, the fire on another, and EMS on again another, and then the rest of your employees on another frequency. Because oftentimes when disaster strikes, police, fire, the parks department, public works, they all need to coordinate. And if they can't talk to one another, it's a really big problem. One of my big concerns about, about our use of spectrum is that it is so finite. The day that we turn this system on, we could no longer expand it. There are no more frequencies in the I-4 corridor at all. Spectrum is a finite natural resource. You only have so much of it. And so you have to try and use that as efficiently as you possibly can. Interoperability is simply the ability of two different agencies to communicate with each other on demand and in real time. It means that when we have to do a mutual aid response, or a joint response to any type of a critical incident that everyone is able to talk to each other. The public has an expectation out of public safety that it doesn't matter where they're at, and it doesn't matter what type of services they need, that if they call 911 for help, that people are going to show up and they're going to be able to coordinate their efforts and they can talk to each other. Many times they don't realize that our ability to respond quickly to them and to locate them in an emergency is dependent on the ability of all of these responders in the public safety community to be able to communicate among themselves. And right now that's a big problem for us. When Flight 277 went down about 10 years ago from Detroit Metropolitan Airport, 18 police agencies responded to that disaster. No two police agencies 
or talk to each other. So the interoperability between police agencies makes it almost impossible for us to talk one to another. We had one person patrol cars and that radio is oftentimes your only link to your agency and indeed could be your only link to help. We've seen in certain emergency situations uh, runners, uh, even hand signals be used to try and overcome the, uh, the problem of lack of radio interoperability. In our ambulances we had seven radios. We had two radios each on three different bands of frequencies plus the paramedic unit radio. You had seven microphones. We had to color code the microphones to figure out which one you had to use. You needed a book to figure out what channel you needed to talk on to which jurisdiction. Now, aside from the operational issues, you had a cost issue. You had seven times the cost of the radio unit for that one vehicle. Those radios cost almost as much as the ambulance itself. I was at that site approximately three minutes after the bomb went off and witnessed for many hours some of the difficulties that took place. We had the Oklahoma City Fire Department is on one frequency. Oklahoma City Police Department is on another. The state of Oklahoma is on another frequency. The county is on different frequencies. We had folks who couldn't communicate. I guess the, the one that I witnessed most clearly and was most frightening, uh, subsequent to the bombing itself, was when there was a belief that there was another bomb in the building. And the fire department is giving the order to evacuate. Well, the only people who were receiving that order initially were the members of the fire department. The police, the county, the feds, everybody else who was in that building, they didn't get the same information at the same time. At the critical time when we were trying to save lives in that building, the availability of communication was not at the level that it should be. Back in 1992, uh, we had a, a fairly large widespread civil disturbance here in the Los Angeles area. Uh, there was a tremendous need for firefighter personnel to receive protection from law enforcement, to be able to talk to law enforcement, law enforcement to be able to talk to us. The way we accomplished that was really after probably 36 hours of, of operation, uh, we traded handy talkie radios and, uh, and we worked through our normal relay through the dispatch center. Very ineffective and uh, really jeopardized a lot of law enforcement personnel as well as firefighters. We had two firefighters that ended up getting wounded uh, as a result of gunfire. There are over 19,000 law enforcement agencies within the United States. Uh, most of them uh, purchase equipment uh, independent of all the other 18,999. So the market is very fragmented, and despite that large number of agencies, that really isn't a high number in terms of the amount of technology that is purchased nationwide. The issue with many agencies is that their existing radio systems are 25 and 30 years old and oftentimes are unable to get parts, unable to maintain the equipment. And it's not a very different analogy than driving a 25-year-old car around. It's an artifact of, of the way the systems have developed over the last 20 to 40 years. They aren't coordinated. They're done on a local basis with funding as it was available with the technology that existed that day. The idea of implementing a major technology upgrade, whether it be voice radio system or mobile data system, new communication center, all the things that we're looking to do in the future, really revolves around careful planning, systems integration. This is absolutely essential. There's a lot of great technology that's coming online now that uh, will help in terms of protecting lives and property by public service agencies. You could have a police officer that will send a fingerprint from the field or send a mugshot digitally down to uh, dispatch or the headquarters or location of vehicles, GPS systems. All these things uh, work such a different world in terms of being capable of enhancing public safety in our community. These new high-tech things do nothing but eat up more and more spectrum, but they're needed and public safety needs them very, very desperately. Wide area systems really work well. They make sense in terms of shared infrastructure and um, I think that that's where we're headed in the future. The economics are there for shared systems. There's no reason to build towers, to install equipment, to go through all of the frequency coordination for one individual agency. If you all pitch in together, you can share the same tower space. As this technology increases and new products and services come out, it's going to eat up 
the spectrum available to develop the systems. While technologies that we may not even be aware of will be coming forth, we need to make sure that as users we efficiently use that spectrum. The problem of public safety interoperability is more a problem of management, of leadership, of institutional control and institutional culture. We know that the next few years are going to require uh, a large investment by all levels of government to upgrade uh, public safety communications. I think that jurisdictions are really in trouble in terms of funding when you're very small. Uh, when you're talking about millions of dollars, unless you have some coordinated effort, you have some assistance by the state, and there has to be a better way to do it, and I think this is where you get into the state and local cooperative effort, and I think the federal government should play a role in that as well. I think the public safety uh, community would like to see the development of standards-based equipment where we can have a competitive market for us to deal in so that we could go to multiple vendors and get multiple types of technology. I think the idea of open standards is really something that uh, needs to be developed by using the user community, the uh, manufacturing community, the vendor community, but also driven by the legislative efforts of the uh, state, local, and federal government. Without standards, we can develop a very nifty system here within L.A. County, but then as resources come to a mutual aid situation from all over the state of California, they may not be in the loop. One group can't really initiate or drive open standards. It has to be a cooperative effort amongst all these groups. I see the evolution of standards as being very important. What we need today, immediately, are some standards to allow us to interconnect disparate systems or pr proprietary systems built by separate and, and different vendors so that we can link those together so that we can begin to start to share information between our jurisdictions. Paramedic 1, okay, MPG's in route already, that's paramedic. They've been getting the help all along because we may do with what we have. The problem is that it's time. Time is life. Multiple units, 220's copies, other units? We need the spectrum, we need the technology, and we need the government coordination to do that. 581, repeat. The ability or the inability to communicate in a timely manner could be that thread between life and death. 237, was that you? We're in the business of public safety, and there should be no compromise. I can't get an answer. What public safety agencies do in this country is save lives and save property. And I think use of spectrum ought to be used, number one, to deserve life and property in this country. See if anybody can get any more information.